at Rob some point? May, Rob may not join us. Okay. Okay. Good to know not to wait for him. Mm -hmm. I just saw an attendee pop in. Oh, Janet can show up. Um, okay. So are we all ready? Mm -hmm. Donna, are you ready? Okay, so yeah. excellent. Thank you, Donna. Um, therefore, it is 2.02 in the afternoon on May 5th, 2020, and I'm going to call the meeting of the Community Resources Committee to order. Um, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20, allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Community Resources Committee. The meeting is being broadcast, recorded for future broadcast, and all votes will be by roll call. At this time, I will call upon each committee member by name. At that time, I will confirm that you can hear me and we can hear you. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Uh, Shalini Balmel. Present. Joe Haneke is present. Evan Ross. Present. Steve Schreiber. Here. And Sarah Swartz. Here. So committee members, there is no chat room for this meeting. If you have technical issues, please let Athena know or myself know. Um, to make a comment or ask a question, please click the raise hand button. If technical difficulties arise as a result of utilizing remote participation, I will decide how to address the situation. Discussion may be suspended while we address technical issues and the minutes will note if a disconnection occurred. Um, and I think, and if necessary, we may pause the meeting until we are reconnected. Um, let me get my agenda up. At this time, we are going to move to general public comment. Uh, residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes based uh, at the discretion of myself, based on the number of people who wish to speak. The council will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during general public comment. To participate in public comment, uh, here is how you do it. If you joined the meeting by Zoom teleconferencing, to indicate you wish to make a comment, click the raise hand button. If you joined our me meeting by telephone, to indicate you wish to make a comment, press star nine on your telephone. During the public comment period, I will recognize members of the public. When called upon, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address. So at this time, is there anyone who would like to make public comment? I am not seeing anyone raise their hand at this time, so we will close public comment with none and move on. Our next item of business is presentation and discussion item 3A. We have one of these, and it is zoning bylaws. We had a referral from the town council to recommend a plan for approaching zoning bylaw revisions, and we are continuing on our quest to figure out how to do that. Um, so at this time, I want to welcome Jim Nash, who is a Northampton City Councilor and Chair of the Committee on Community Resources in Northampton. So almost the same committee as ours, but over in Northampton. Um, we had heard at our last meeting that Northampton had, uh, uh, whether we'd heard about Northampton's process from Christine Brestrup at one of our last meetings, on how zoning bylaws get changed and how they sort of work their way through the system. And we thought it might be good to see if we can bring a city councilor in to discuss this. So I am thrilled that we have Jim Nash here to talk about how not only the, com the Committee on Community Resources deals with this, but what happens when staff is ready to bring a bylaw change, um, how it goes about that within his committee um, within the council in general. And then I also hope he'll discuss a little bit about how Northampton dealt with a recent, I don't know how recent it was, um, Jim, sorry, the uh, large scale revisions of the zoning bylaws in town, I believe it was in Northampton. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to ask some questions of you, Jim. 
um, and, and get some more information about how our sister city over across the river does things since you guys have had more experience than this than we have. So thank you, Jim. And the, the floor is yours if you wish to unmute your mic. Okay. Well, um, hello, Amherst. Nice to be uh, uh, meeting with you guys today. And um, that, um, you know, with, I, I, ha I don't have a, a presentation planned, but I can, I can give you a general overview of, you know, how we go about um, instituting zoning changes over here in Northampton. Um, that uh, typically, uh, recommendations for zoning changes will start with our planning department and um, and then the planning department will work with the the planning board to fine-tune and um, and deal with the technical side of, of a zoning change um, then that uh, that uh, particular item will be brought to a, a public hearing uh, often what we'll do is we will have a shared public hearing where members of one of our other subcommittees, the um, Legislative Matters Committee and the Planning Board meet together holding a, a public hearing where both the Planning Board is hearing public concerns as well as the legislative side, City Council is hearing concerns. Um, and that is, that's actually kind of where the handoff happens between um, the, the planning side, the administrative side of, of, of developing the, the proposed zoning language. And then it transitions over to um, council. And, and our side is less technical and is more based on doing, it's more about doing the outreach to um, uh, constituents and interested parties around the city um, and um, uh, sometimes we'll, we may even hold additional uh, public meetings beyond that could be our community resources committee could do some of that as well um, uh, but typically we um, on most zoning matters we do a lot of outreach around that that one hearing where both legislative matters and the uh, and the planning board are meeting to make sure people are getting to the table early for that uh, particular meeting, um, and then um, once uh, legislative matters is the committee where we we say it's the last bite at the apple for any of um, any uh, legislation uh, for city council and. Um, They'll, they'll give it a recommendation one way or the other to city council, most likely a positive recommendation, sometimes neutral, if there's aspects that still need to be further discussed. Um, and then it goes to council and we deliberate and um, require a two thirds vote of city council to approve. And um, so that's, that's how things move forward. Uh, I, I think that the critical thing for us as counselors is that um, zoning can be, you know, it, it, it's some of the dullest stuff to read in the world, but also it is some of the most contentious um, uh, legislation that we as legislators have to deal with. And um, Attorney Seawald, our um, uh, city solicitor has said, he said to me, you know, Zoning is about somebody winning and somebody losing. And that because of that, that, the, I, that when you're, you're doing your public process, feelings can be high and, um, and that you also wanna make sure that you actually, one of my personal things is to make sure that people know about the, the zoning change that's about to happen. People don't want surprises. And the, the important thing for me is to get people into those discussions early, because once, it, once something arrives at city council, we can change things, we can vote things up or down, but, but by and large, things are pretty cooked by that point. But if you get in at that hearing stage 
And, um, and it becomes evident to the other members of, of council, you know what, we need to do a little more outreach and a little more work on this, um, that um, that's a really important piece. And that can really bring the temperature down. Uh, recently, we, um, we, we uh, undertook some changes in zoning language that had to do with non-conforming uses, you know, whatever that means. And that, um, and if I think about it, I can actually think what it means, but um, that, um, that doing the, w there was the hearing, but also during that discussion, it became clear that we could adapt things a little bit better on the council side. And we actually worked with the planning department to rework some of the language. Um, Councillor Thorpe had a lot to do with that. And um, so there was some compromise language that made everything a little clearer. And that, um, um, so that would be an example of how ha making sure you do the homework around outreach before it gets to city council. Um, you you want to be, ideally, in, in, my, in my view, when you're at council and you're voting on something, everybody's complimenting each other on all of the work that they've done and that um, uh, prior to getting to that point. So, um, so that's kind of, that, that's my overview. Um, Mandy and I had talked about um, uh, on the phone, you know, the, the broader scope of how we got to where we are around our, um, our any changes we make to our zoning, that, that everything goes back to our strategic plan, which we approved, the, the Sustainable Northampton Plan, which we approved, I think it was about 12, 13 years ago. Um, there was a lot of outreach and that was organized by our, our planning department. Um, lots of outreach to different constituencies around town. Um, many hundreds of people were involved in that. Uh, there was a lot of discussion and it was finally approved by city council. And um, within that uh, plan was some language about how um, we needed to take that strategic plan and implement it into our zoning. And the next step um, that we undertook was to have, uh, we, we pulled together a zoning revisions committee um, where the, the idea was to take the strategic plan and look at the zoning and actually look how, how the two need to go together. Um, what we saw was that we had a, uh, a vision for a, a denser, more walkable city, but our existing zoning pretty much stood in the way of that. And particularly of all places in our, in our downtown neighborhoods that, um, much of the, uh, many of the dimensional requirements for our urban neighborhoods were more um, in line with what you would find in, in um, suburban neighborhoods or on the outer edges of town. So um, um, we made a lot of recommendations uh, to, uh, to change, you know, we really looked at all the uses, the dimensional requirements, we, the Zoning Revisions Committee did a lot of the, um, that groundwork around uh, doing the outreach with, um, with the residents in Northampton. Uh, we had, uh, uh, we met 50 times <laughs> and we, um, well over a hundred hours, that each meeting was two hours long and, um, and that, uh, those meetings were open to the public. Uh, at least five or six of those involved uh, holding public forums at you know any the elementary schools or some of our community centers. Um, uh, that um, and that from that um, we made recommendations, general recommendations for the planning board to follow uh, to uh, institute zoning changes and. Um, so that work went back to the planning board, which went back through that process I described, where planning board uh, to city council. And, um, and one of the things that happened in that process was that 
for the smaller properties, your typical property around um, Northampton, and, and I'm sure this is true in, in Amherst as well, it's it, lots of one to four family homes. Um, and that, yes, there's some bigger complexes, uh, there's bigger developments, um, but by and large, people were pretty okay with what was recommended by the ZRC and the planning board. And that, that aspect of the new zoning went through. Where, every, where we, we, um, we instituted a moratorium for two years on projects of seven or more units. So we could really examine what it was we wanted there. And um, that, um, that but it was, it was interesting that the pushback was not around what uh, people could typically do with their homes, like, you know, put a garage in, a, um, a, um, put in an apartment above the garage, maybe add a, a unit to their house. People were all fine with people being able to do that by right even. And, um, but it's, it was the, the larger projects requiring a special permit um, that had bigger impacts that, um, that, those are the ones where I, we see a lot of pushback and I'm sure you guys see pushback as well. And um, that, um, but in the end, by going through this process of coming up with the strategic plan, the zoning recommendations, many of the zoning items that we deal with the have the issues have already been discussed discussed and the direction we're going in has already been established um, that um, we still have contentious stuff that comes up but by and large the um, uh, by having you know that process of strategic plan to zoning revisions to um, having that broader vision in place, we're able to move, move some items through um, fairly quickly. And, um, and not, not just to be fast, but also to know that we've done the work, the, the homework, to know that what we're voting for matches what people want. So, um, all right, I guess I didn't have a presentation, but there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Um, I am going to open it up to our committee members and others, uh, Christine and Dave, too, if anyone has questions or wants to ask anything of Jim. Let's start with Sarah. Okay. Oops, sorry. So many buttons. Um, so you talked a lot about outreach, and that's something that I think that we're still sort of um, struggling with trying to figure out outreach to um, our constituents because um, one of the things that we hear a great deal is that people just didn't know about a hearing or so I'm just wondering what kinds of things that you do for outreach because I feel like we do a lot of pretty mainstream things but people are asking for more so I just didn't know if what you did for outreach. Am I unmiked? Oh, yeah. So, um, well, my rule of th thumb, Sarah, is that I'd rather have somebody angry at me at their front door as I'm talking to them rather than at the podium in city council. And that, um, that, that you know, my rule of thumb is th that the better discussions happen early on and that, um, and that it's really about, it, for my constituents, it's letting them know what's going on. And I think by and large, um, uh, city council, my colleagues are, are good at doing that particular outreach. Um, there are, you know, there are notification requirements for um, hearings that have to do with, you know, it, uh, it could be a special permit, it could be a, a zoning map change, um, but, I, I always, I, I find, you know, I'd, I'd like to see those things aug augmented. I'm actually in discussions with um, uh, Attorney Seawald now. We're having a back and forth about maybe ways that we can improve some of that notification through our ordinance. Uh, but that, um, um, but the onus really falls, I, 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 it falls on counselors to really have work their networks so that everybody knows 
or, or the, the important players know um, about any, any items that are coming. So, and there's two things here. There's, you know, what I'm talking about generally right now is a project or a map change that's particular to a few properties. Um, and then there's, you know, there's broader stuff that um, could have to do with uses throughout a, a residential zone or a commercial zone. Um, and the types of outreach are going to be different for both of those things. And that um, uh, it's really important to figure out which, um, which, which particular thing you're dealing with there, whether it's going to be, you know, something for your downtown district or for a particular residential zone, or is it just there's a, a particular development going on, uh, um, proposed development to go in. So um, did I answer your question? Probably in a rambly sort of way. Yeah, so I, I always feel that ultimately the onus comes back to um, us as, um, as representatives of people to make sure that they know. Um, do you have a follow-up, Sarah? Because you have your hand raised again. I do, yeah, so I do have a follow-up. So. Um, you know, we're, this is the first time that, that we've done this whole town councilor thing. So what I think that I'm hearing you say is that, so say there was going to be a development or a new business opening and it happened to be in my district. So what I'm hearing you say is that as a town councilor, because, you know, most likely, I mean, I got elected because I, I know, I know a lot of people in my district. I know people who you might think is, are big players. And I also know a lot of neighbors. So what I think that you're saying is, is that if something is happening in my district, I would actually just start um, maybe networking with people, having all the basic facts and actually doing some knocking on doors or calling someone up and saying, you know, um, I have some information. Can we have a phone call? Can we, um, can I have a few minutes of your time and just explain basic facts and spread basic facts to try to bring some information personally as me as a counselor on a personal level to people, which I guess for me in being an Amherst, then I wonder how much of that seems okay with open meeting law. So um, I like the idea of, and we do have district meetings, but I'm just wondering if that's what you're saying. Like we, uh, if something's happening in our district, we have a, a personal touch to try to reach out to people. And then we kind of bring everything all together to the rest of the community. Um, well, I think in terms of your constituents, if they're affected directly by it, that, um, uh, that you're going to have the most difficult vote. Okay. Because that, you know, uh, your, your other colleagues can go, well, you know, I, you know, I have this certain philosophy or, you know, I have this certain vision for our city, but you are going to be in the position of, I, you know, somebody saying, you know what, I don't like this. I think it's too big. I think it's too ugly. I think that they're going to make too much noise. There's going to be lots of smells coming from that place. And that, um, and that you, um, it, it's, it's a diff it can be a difficult vote, vote for you. And that, um, but by going out and doing your homework and, and letting, you know, also being clear about what it is you're, you can uh, weigh in on and what you can't. Because there, there's often a lot of limitations as to um, what it is that the, um, uh, what is it, that, um, I'm trying to think of an example. It'll come to me in a minute. But that oftentimes what we're doing is it where, you know, people want to, people, all right, people say, well, the, it's a business and um, let's say it's a, um, a fish store and it's going to smell. And the thing is, there's nothing, there's probably nothing in your city ordinance banning a business that might put off some smells. Um, maybe if it's a uh, some sort of farming or something like that, that, um, that you can't vote something down because somebody's worried that it might smell. Or it might bring in, in some cars um, that, you know, everything brings in some cars. Uh, that, but you, you, if you have restrictions on the number of visits for a particular, um, like in some of our um, 
our neighborhood zoning or uh, that we have um, restrictions on the amount of trips that a home business can have, which I think is 25 trips per day, which is a lot. So you could be a music teacher or a therapist. And um, so I guess this is all to say, <laughs> also really defining what it is that you as that uh, representative, where your power actually lies to what you can vote on and being really clear with your constituents. And, um, and also being true to what, um, who you are and what your vision is for the city when you make that vote. Um, Cause you might make, you can't, there's votes like that you can't make everybody happy. So. Thank you. Um, Christine. Here's my button. Okay, so I had a couple of questions. Um, and I'll ask them all together and then um, Jim can answer whichever ones he wants to. Okay. So one of my questions is what's the difference between your CRC and your legislative matters committee and how do they work on zoning? So that's my first question. Second question is um, how does outreach work? Um, who does the outreach? It sounds like you're saying that town, the city councilors do some of the outreach. Um, I imagine that the planning department does some of the outreach. And what tactics do you use and techniques? Um, I understand that some of them are public meetings, but you've also described going door to door to do some outreach. And I guess a third question has to do with um, understanding what Sarah was asking. Sarah seemed to be asking about particular projects that would be coming along that counselors may or may not um, uh, like or uh, support or whatever. Um, and so that was interesting to me in, in light of the fact that we're talking about zoning. So zoning usually comes first, although sometimes projects come first and you have to change the zoning to allow the project. So um, so when you are going around um, doing your outreach, are you usually talking about proposed zoning amendments or do you sometimes also talk about particular projects that are being proposed in town and express support or opposition to those? That was a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... So recently we had a, uh, a map change for a, to rezone a property uh, so it could operate as a, um, as a nightclub in, in Northampton. Um, that, um, and it had, it all, but there were also a number of other properties, properties that were part of that change because Otherwise, it would be spot zoning, and also it it lined up it lined up with um, our strategic plan, the Sustainable Northampton plan, to actually make these changes. Um, so that is a case of where um, the business actually uh, the property selling and the business uh, thriving required this this zoning change. Uh, so. Yeah, so sometimes there's this uh, there's this backwards way of doing things. I'm I'm usually not really comfortable uh, in those situations. Uh, that um, I I think it allows me as a um, as a counselor to uh, do more pushback because uh, we're being asked to do things that are you know typically the the way things should go is you have the zoning it, and there's a map and the uses are laid out and then and then a project comes along and it's you know it requires a special permit to be approved and that's how it should work it shouldn't be this well we have an opportunity you know it happens though and we need to be nimble enough at times to respond to it and um, but at the same time being uh, clear about that um, as 
and and I did this while deliberating that we we are doing things a little out of order and with the idea that we're trying to bring things into order. Um, so um, I don't know, Christine, did that answer Sarah's question? <laughs> Sarah would be the judge of that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so sometimes it's what, but ideally things are laid out ahead of time and that we're doing thought things in a thoughtful way that um, uh, that the, the zoning is outlining how things are going to develop. And actually when things are done that way, things go very smoothly. I mean, the, the amount of pushback that I've heard around smaller projects within my ward over the last decade. I haven't been counselor for the last decade, but I've been fairly well connected. The, for, you know, single family homes, two family homes, the, the pushback's been om almost nothing. For larger projects, they had, you know, reusing a church, uh, putting in 15 condos, the, you know, the, those things will get discussion going. So um, let's see, outreach. So, all right, I'm going to hop through your, your list here. So my approach to outreach is to get people involved as early as possible. So if the planning board is, so I want to be attuned to what the planning board is working on, in particular, if it affects my constituents, because I want to tell them to go to the planning board and hear what it is they're talking about, so that they're prepped ahead of time. Also, I, I want um, uh, neighbors of a particular project to know it is going on and how they can be involved and possibly if they want to get organized in some way that they can do that and and they're doing it not just to push back but to be informed and be part of the process and and I and I, I'm always really clear about why I want people to support and be you know to be organized and um, and be involved in discussion. It's, it's to make the process work, not to stop things. And um, so, um, so the outreach is, yes, there's, there's things we can do as council to create forms for outreach, but it's also letting constituents know where they can hop in along the way. Um, Let's see, tactics and techniques. Um, well, so uh, for, for me as a counselor, I have, I have a, a fairly decent email list. There's also uh, a lot of different social media type blogs going on in my ward. Um, there is, um, there, we have a neighborhood association which I, I go to the monthly meetings and I report out to them on any of the things that I'm doing. And also just like, hey, I've heard that this is coming down the pike. Um, that, um, and also during council, you know, before and after, or, or at the start of council meeting, we do any announcements. So if I know if something's going on, I'll announce that people in my ward should be, you know, should make an effort to go to this planning board meeting, to go to this particular meeting that council is holding um, so that they can get more information and be part of the process. Um, as far as broader, you know, uh, let's say it could be a um, something bigger like changing use within a zone or, you know, revisiting, you know, the strategic plan that you're going to the newspaper for, you're going to the radio station, um, and um, yeah, you're looking for ways to be in the press and in the news to to get people involved. So it really has to do to do with how big or small that um, discussion needs to be. Um, and okay, legislative matters and community resources. Um, so we have um, uh, we have uh, a number of different committees. We, so legislative matters used to be called ordinance. And um, what ordinance was in legislative matters is, it's that last committee before things go to council where, they, where the language is looked at and um, whether 
the um, legislation is, let, let me just say this. I, its goal is to really look at the language and before it goes to council so that everything is in order. So what we're voting on in council is something that's been seen by the, uh, the city attorney and has been vetted by uh, some of my colleagues. Um, so it's ready for us to, you know, we're not doing any wholesale changes to the language when it gets to council. Um, so that's the goal of, of legislative matters in my mind. Um, we have the community resources committee. That committee is, uh, the idea is for us to be looking at, so for example, our next community resource committee is going to feature uh, people who are working on the COVID-19 crisis, different organizations. So um, uh, we've lined up the United Way. Um, um, I am also going to be reaching out to um, uh, um, how am I blanking on this? Oh, because I'm not prepared. All right. <laughs> but we're going to bring in a bunch of community organizations. And it's not to interrogate them. It's to give them the platform and say, what is it that you're doing? What is it you need the community to do to support you? And we've also set it up so that it's going to be a Zoom meeting and it's going to be live and broadcast on uh, local TV. So that our focus is what's going on in the community. We also have a city services committee that looks at what the city does in terms of its um, uh, the services it pr provides. Um, so that could be uh, having the health department come in and speak or having uh, DPW come in and speak about roadway projects. It's very city focused. Um, we, let's see, what else am I missing there? Um, we have a transportation parking commission, um, but I think that describes them right there. I think I'm missing a committee. <laughs> that sounds but I'm good. not on that committee, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, so let's go to S Steve, you have a question. Hi, thanks so much, very informative. So maybe this is a mess. Maybe this is just um, a discussion for us. So the some of the things we're talking about are projects. So projects are normally not the purview of you know our town council. Mm -hmm. um, normally our purview are the the bylaws that enable projects to happen. Right. So and actually we're just this is from experience on our planning board that where things sometimes go astray is when zoning changes are made thinking that a particular project, that this will enable a particular project. And that doesn't happen. The land is swapped or sold or whatever. And another project which had not been envisioned takes that place. So that that's, so one of the things that we're obligated by you know state law to notify for projects that are going for special permit. And I think by, for a site plan review, or at least that's a local bylaw, but we're not obligated to uh, to notify for zoning changes. So what you were saying about how one notifies for zoning changes is incredibly helpful. So there are some zoning changes that affect everyone. Say we're going to change all the frontages in Amherst, or, you know, something like that. And then there are others that may be specific to a particular district because that district only has that kind of a zone. Like um, um, what's the word? With the, like business parks, you know, something like that, where we only have a couple of those. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's, you know, what you said about trying to get the notice out, even when we don't have to get the notice out, and especially when many or all might be affected by something. But I think another premise I want to challenge a little bit is the idea that there's winners and losers, winners and losers in zoning. And so a lot of zoning changes are presented that way, that you get your tall building or whatever will get nothing from that other than maybe an increase in taxes you know something like that but I think that figuring out a way to change the message to everyone wins on this because we have a more diverse town or we have a you know something I think is you know also critical for the messaging but getting your perspective I think has been incredibly you know helpful on this well I, I 
just because Attorney Seawald said it, I, I don't necessarily agree with them on it. <laughs> but I do think that um, that it does that sense of winners and looter, losers does come up in those discussions and people, you know, people get, I, I, the most heated stuff I've seen has to do with construction projects and zoning. <laughs> and um, so, um, uh, let me think, uh, I'm trying to think back. And so you were more commenting than questioning or, <laughs> We sometimes do that. I think so. Yeah, more, 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 more of a conversation. But I, I yeah. Does the city of Northampton? I'll make it into a question. I'll, like Jeopardy, I'll turn it into a question. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it's helpful. <laughs> does Does Northampton get involved in the individual projects, or does your city well, council okay. get involved? So that's a good point. Um, so that as counselors, uh, I I'm I'm asked by constituents to go to planning board meetings and. So to speak out for or against or, and, um, and in that role, I'm, I, I make it clear as I'm up at the podium, I know that I have no vote on this particular matter. I am here speaking for this project that's before you today. And that, um, and I'm speaking for, you know, these 10 to 20 people in the room right here. And, um, and that, um, and that I tend to be more aware of what the zoning laws are so I can speak to the specifics better to help frame things for my constituents. And it kind of prompts them as to when they get up there to speak, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't, you know, the setbacks, that's the part that was bugging me. And <laughs> that, um, that it, be it becomes a way to, you know, kind of bridge what my constituents are saying and what the planning board is thinking, because they're sitting there and they're all just going, you know, well, we're just, we just have to follow the regulations. So, you know, it doesn't matter whether they think the building's ugly or not. But if somebody, you know, hold it, but you have, you have some leeway in terms of uh, putting some buffer in uh, or within the setback, could you, you know, ask them to put up a fence or put in some trees and the, and the planning board can go, oh yeah, we can do that, you know, and that, um, so yeah, so in a planning board meeting, I, we're, we're not voting up or down on anything, but, we, but I have been asked numerous times over the last few years to speak in representation of constituents in meetings. And um, so. Thank you, Jim. I, I'm gonna, I got a question and it goes back more to the process. Um, yeah. When you were describing the process, it, sounded to me like the hearing that's required that the planning board and generally your legislative matters committee holds together right. mm -hmm. um, is more towards the beginning of the process. Maybe when the language isn't fully set, it's been vetted a little bit, um, but maybe it's not been vetted for months. You know, it's, it's been there, it's been talked about in maybe a planning board meeting or a council for a little bit, but not to death. And then the hearing is held and then maybe there's, is there a lot more modifications afterwards? So I guess my question is, is the hearing more towards the beginning of the process or the end of the process in Northampton? Um, it depends on, I, it tends to be more towards the be beginning, but um, it does depend on what the, what, what the item is up for discussion. So, um, so, we have something before us on council this week. I haven't seen the agenda yet, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be there. It has to do with um, uh, for um, utilities related to keeping the city going, um, that if they have a piece of property to put like in a, um, uh, some sort of electrical type facility or something, you know, like a, uh, what are you, where they have the, um, the big capacitors and all of that kind of stuff um, that um, they don't need uh, to have frontage or meet certain setback requirements and um, that that went through fairly quickly and that um, so um, that's going to move forward fast but then 
when things are so what's something that took a little more time well there was that that language around um non-conforming uses that um also was there was a lawsuit brought forward by some uh constituents that had to do with a particular pro you know there was a project they didn't like it they found zoning language they found a uh, a glitch in our zoning language you ground the the um, the project and the approval process to the halt to a, to a halt um, so the language needed to be changed um, yeah so there was lots of discussion around that before it got to the hearing stage and um, so it really depends on what the particular issue is um, so sometimes it goes fast sometimes it uh, that um, and sometimes that technical discussion um, uh, happens early on because I think what you're getting to has to do with um, if it's if it's a big idea and it's not formulated well and it ends up in some sort of language and then it gets handed off to the legislature and then you have to figure out you know well this doesn't quite match up the other thing is you can always send stuff back you know that um but um but in our view uh when things work right they come from the planning department planning board the language works it's technically correct um that they've already worked often the city solicitor is also working with the planning department to put the language together before it gets to that hearing so um Thank you. Uh, Christine, you raised your hand. Oh, I'm not muted. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify the role of the counselor in um, Northampton. It sounds like um, one of the things counselors do is inform the public about what's coming up, whether it's a zoning change or a project. But another thing that counselors might do um, is to either support or oppose a particular issue that might come up, um, be it a zoning issue or a, or a project? Is that, is that second part correct? That is, so um, it, it's not, it's some counselors do not do that. I make a point, I, I uh, will be involved uh, in uh, discussions at planning board. Um, some counselors completely avoid it um, and some just go to listen. Uh, some go to speak and support or against projects. Um, I, you know, when I'm speaking before the planning board, it's more to help to define what my constituents are asking for, rather than to say, personally, I'm for or against a particular project. Um, so. Okay. Thank you. Um, Shalini. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I guess I'm still not clear what is the role of the CRC, if at all, in the zoning changes. And uh, another question I had was that uh, how often do you allow zoning changes in a year? Is it certain times in a year or as they come up? And my can I ask a third one or should we wait? No, you can ask. You'll probably have to ask again because I won't remember them all, but keep going. <laughs> okay. And uh, my third question is, you know, as we're considering the process, there's that struggle between, um, and I understand the importance of telling people, being thoughtful, including everyone, and then also to be effective, efficient. And so with the changes that you brought in after you, Northampton changed their processes, well, what specifically helped Northampton be more uh, effective and efficient in the changes processes? Um, okay, so let me start with that one. I think what, by doing the, the work between the strategic plan and the zoning revisions committee that we're able to take where you're able to 
pre-discuss so much of what the, the matters that are related to zoning that um, that it that it actually makes the zoning discussions move along more quickly because you can you know we discussed this before it aligns with what the strategic plan is this also matches up what we've been doing for a number of years and here's the vision this is the direction we're going in if you can hit when you you're given all of those things um, you're not just looking at you know why are we changing the frontage you know <laughs> Where'd that come from? Well, it came from all of this work prior, and here's the direction we're going in. And um, that um, when Mandy and I were talking about this about a week and a half ago, it sounded like it, that might be a place that Amherst might wanna consider is having some sort of zoning revisions committee or some other body to kind of look at what what's the strategic plan for the city and what, make recommendations on the zoning, um, general parameters that maybe you guys can vote on and that it, it just helps streamline things for as, as stuff comes down the pike. Um, so I, I think that's one of the things we did. And by the way, a lot of those were hard discussions. You know, um, you know people, you know, it, it did, you know, it, what it does is it, um, by having the, the zoning revisions discussions, uh, we were able to get on the table some of the more visionary things that we, we didn't agree about. And, and Mandy, you were talking about that, that sometimes it feels like there's two different visions of Amherst going on and they start butting heads. And that by having that discussion and say, you know, hold it, here's what our vision is for this particular zone and then another vision, you know, like how does it all fit together? And having that, that discussion clear, it, it just helps when, you know, oh, for this particular urban zone, we're gonna change things to these uses and it lines up with what we've been talking about. It, it makes the whole process work a lot better. Um, so, um, all right, so that was question number two. Then there was something about, oh, so the CRC, what, what our role is. So, um, so our role is really to be, have, we're the conduit between city council and the broader community and the services that are out there. It could be with the business community around uh, downtown issues. Um, uh, a few years ago, um, the, uh, uh, the, Community Resources Committee um, began, you know, talking about uh, panhandling. Also, uh, discussed uh, uh, wages uh, for downtown um, employees. Um, those are some issues that it took on. Uh, they, um, the CRC had also. What was it? There was a zoning issue. I'm I, I can't remember what it was a few years ago. But the CRC, the 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 community resources committee was charged with doing the outreach for city council. Um, so, um, so we're kind of the body that if city council needs like a broader outreach to the city, that's our, that's our role as well. All right, there was one other question in there. Did I hit them all? Uh, it was about frequency of zoning changes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So uh, frequency, you know, um, uh, I guess the way the way it seems to happen is um, our planning department is always, you know, it seems like twice a year they come up with a package of things that they send our way, and um, uh, that um, and that there's once something's presented, I think it's 60 days that, you know, once something's a uh, you know, a zoning change is officially presented, it needs to go through the entire process in 60 days where there's a hearing, where it's um, discussed and council, you know, uh, uh, addresses it and then it's voted on. And so there's, there's a clock that goes on with it. And uh, typically, the, the best time to introduce such things um, would be um, 
you know, January, February, which the non-conforming uses that came up in, in that time frame, And the other is, you know, se September, October. Um, you don't want people away on vacation. You want to avoid all of none. I, 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 none of this should happen during the summer. Um, cause typically we meet less and that, uh, people are away and, um, you don't want people to have a feeling that something was done behind their backs. So, mm -hmm. so maybe you. that answered the question, but for the planning department and, um, and it, it's Jeff, no, David, and, and you're connected with the planning department in Amherst. So Christine is our planning director and Dave Zomek is our assistant town manager. Oh, okay. got it. All right. All right. Conservation. So Christine, that lines up with your, your approach, right? Uh, may I speak, Mandy? Yes. <laughs> we haven't really done any zoning amendments except for um, at the very beginning when uh, the town council took its seat, um, we needed to update our zoning bylaw to bring it into conformance with our charter. So we had a repeal and replace process uh -huh. and that was um, during the summer of 2019 but since then we really haven't um, done any zoning at all we have a lot of things that are kind of waiting in the wings and when you know we get the message from uh, town council that the time is right we're going to we would like to bring them but right. we're now currently in discussion about exactly what does that mean? Exactly who comes up with the idea and how does it get, um, how does it get to town council? And then when it, once it gets to town council, what does town council do with it? And currently the thought is that it would go to our version of CRC and then they would make a recommendation or they would hold a joint public hearing with the planning board mm -hmm. and both bodies would make a recommendation to town council but we haven't really fully gelled that process yet. And right. that's kind of what we're working through now. So. Thank you. Um, Shalini. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I understood um, what Jamie was saying is that the CRC, it sounds like the main role is that connection, the bridge and outreach between the larger community and the council. And it doesn't necessarily necessarily deal with the zoning changes. Am I correct? Right. It's it, it can be any number of items that have to do with the community. And the other thing is that you recommended certain times where the zoning changes. Uh, it makes sense that everyone can be involved, but it's not uh, that you have fixed times that only in January or only in February, but those are just comments based recommendations. Yes. Well, um, yeah, let's see. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think as a rule that city councilors in, in Northampton would have a really difficult time voting on a zoning change during the summer, um, that, that it, just when people aren't around, you know, it's the same thing with the budget. We don't want to be voting on our budget over the summer that, the summer is going to be about, you know, keeping the, the city open and keeping the finances running. That uh, the, the deeper discussions need to happen in, you know, fall, winter, and spring when people can uh, participate. Um, and that, um, and that the, you know, as, as a planning, one of the things I've seen our planning department do is when they come up with packages, you know, that there's, that the items are somehow related, that there's a theme of, you know, that, um, uh, you know, it, it could be that we're uh, trying, so uh, one we anticipate in the fall has to do with uh, bring, starting to institute form-based zoning um, codes to overlay on top of a, um, some of our downtown business, uh, our central business uh, uh, zone. And that because what's so right now we have a central bar, uh, central uh, business architecture committee 
which kind of oversees how our downtown looks. But we want our downtown to expand a bit and head down like Conn Street, Pleasant Street, and King Street. And where that is happening, uh, where we want that to happen, rather than have this um, this committee that's overlooking the, you know, whether or not the, um, uh, the, the windows meet the standards of downtown, that will we'll give them something that's, that's a little more flexible in terms of form-based uh, zoning. Do you guys know what that is? It's basically where you're proving the, 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 the type of structure and not so much what goes on inside it. And you can add in some details of what you want to see, but largely it's to say, here's, here's what it's going to look, the space it's going to fill and how it's going to relate to the street. And, uh, but allowing, um, a, a lot of latitude for the developer in terms of how the, the building's going to look. Um, so, um, so that's something that there's a theme that we're going to be looking at in the fall. Um, there's also sometimes there's 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 stuff that just kind of piecemeal that you know oh, here's this this item that came up and it it needs to be fixed. We we do we deal with stuff like that too. Um, but I think they do best when there's some sort of overarching theme going on. Thank you. Um, we're grabbing some hands, so let's let's do them, and then I think we're going to try and move on slightly from this to discussing what our process might look like. So Dave, and then Sarah. Well, first, I, I just want to thank Jim for for being with us today. This has been hugely helpful. And maybe Mandy, um, maybe I could save my comments uh, for a few minutes. I really wanted to talk about our process a little bit. And in particular, I wanted to talk about the role of the zoning subcommittee. And um, there has been mention of, a, of perhaps, I know, I think it was your last meeting or the meeting before, Lynn and others mentioned the possibility of another committee to oversee zoning. And so I can hold these questions until we get into our process a little bit, if that's, I'm yeah. whatever you Let, want. Let's do that. Let's finish up. Sarah, do you have a question for Jim? Yeah, so let, let's have that. And then we'll, we'll, if Jim wants to stay, he can, but we'll move on to our own discussion. So this will probably also, I think Dave will probably cover this in talking about our process, but as a town counselor, I think this is one thing I'm hearing and I just want to check and make sure I'm hearing it right, is that in Northampton, you, if there's going to be a zoning change that, that um, people who are affected by it are notified by the town, I guess is one of my questions. And I'm wondering if, if that is sort of tying into what I think you're saying is, is that early in the process, you let people who are going to be directly affected know what the zoning change is and then also um, give them an idea of, you know, we're changing the zoning because um, I don't do, if it's tied to a project or saying we're trying to make downtown more accessible. Um, and what I'm thinking you're saying is, is that giving people this heads up and then tying the zoning change to uh, and a larger idea of how it fits into, I'm going to call it a master plan, because that's what it is for us, is a way to start bringing sort of people together and explaining things to actually ease the process instead of making it more difficult later. Um, yes. <laughs> um, that, um, yeah, you said a lot there, Sarah. So um, that, um, Yeah, so um, I, I'm trying to think uh, in terms of the questions there. So in terms of, er, so the city um, is required. So in certain cases, so for a map change, the city right now per our ordinance requires that um, anybody whose property is gonna be um, uh, affected by a map change that we, mail a notice to them, uh, letting them know that it's happened. We have to post um, that uh, a, a public hearing is going to happen in the newspaper. We need to let everybody know about the, the public hearing. 
Um, strangely, we don't let abutters know. And so um, that's, that's actually something that I'm looking into right now to uh, change our ordinance. Um, and that I think that it's important that anybody who's, uh, it, it, it's important for the property owner to know that his property is changing, but the person who lives next door needs to know as well. And in many ways, I think that they're probably more impacted than the person who's having the, the zone change. Because the person who's having the zone change, it, typically it's like they're on a main street and now, you know, oh, they're gonna get to build another floor or two higher and they can add in more parking. And for them, it's like, hey, that sounds great. I, I bought this as a commercial property. Next door behind is where you have the residential properties where now it's like, well, what do you mean they can build just 10 feet from my property line? And, you know, and oh, and they're gonna put in a parking lot and, or they're allowed to do that now. And that I think that, um, in terms of notification, that's something that we need to change that um, because uh, that that's the most important, in fact, around the zoning discussion between the abutters and, and, and where that uh, new zone is changing, um, that's the time to show up because once it's established, there's nothing they can do. Oh yeah, they put in a permit for the parking lot, and here comes the lights, and um, your you know your backyard's going to be full of uh, light all night long. Well, when did that happen? Oh well, we didn't send you a notice because your property wasn't directly affected. And I I think that you know that I'm and I know a number of other counselors are interested in um, entertaining such a change because we sidetracked into that discussion last fall when we were talking about things. But um, so in terms of that, so uh, last fall, we had a zoning change for a few properties on Bridge Street. And in, since we didn't have, in, we don't have in place that thing for the abutters, I went around and I talked to everybody. I was not, you know, people across the street, behind, you know, anybody who touched, you know, where they shared that property, uh, you know, a property line, I, I knocked on their door and, and let them know what was going on so they could be part of the process. Um, so, did that answer the question? I, you know, I, I think this, our, we as a city, a city can do more. And, and I think that, um, that in, I think that notifying people directly, even the abutters needs to be part of the process. So, because it makes our job easier. Other, I, I spend an entire weekend knocking on doors just to make sure people weren't surprised. So. Thank you. Um, Shalini, is this a question for Jim? Okay, so you may ask it and then we're gonna, we're gonna transition our discussion after Shalini. All right, so many questions. Thank you so much, Jim, for being here. Well, feel free to call after, you know. Yes. So. That's true. Okay, so I'm thinking about the origins of the change and you started the process with the planning department. Does it ever happen that the zoning changes come from the town council or a committee of the council or a town employee staff? Um, so I'm trying to think. So um, for example, this thing I'm discussing right now about letting abutters know, that's gonna originate from council. Um, I don't know, in, along the way, the mayor may hop in and say, that's a great idea, I'm gonna institute it and we're gonna make it happen. And then it doesn't go to council because it's already been implemented. Uh, that, uh, that um, but typically the big ideas come from the planning department. That our role is, um, as counselors is to make sure that people are part of the process and and have their voices heard and also to vet things to like you know you know as people bring things up you know did you really think about this you know having you know the planning department says you know yes we did think about that here's the implications if we did it the other way um that um that i Oftentimes, I, I, I think of our role as counselors is we can't go into the weeds the way 
the planning department have, uh, can, but um, our job is to give things the smell test, to really poke around, ask hard questions, good questions, and make sure we get good answers that to, to get a sense that, yeah, they really thought this through. And um, so, but we can't go, I, in, in the end, counselors can't go as deeply as, as um, planning department folks. Oh, and you mentioned other departments coming up with things. You know, sometimes like, you know, the building department and the planning department are connected and sometimes they'll come up with things like, you know, the building inspector said it's much easier if we do this and, and it, things tend to come through the planning department, uh, but they could be influenced by um, the way uh, the city goes about, about its business, so. Okay. Thank you. Um, so now I, I know I might be breaking up because my internet's stable, but um, thank you so much, Jim, for joining us. You may stay on the call if you want. Um, we're going to transition away from talking to Jim and questions for Jim to our own process and, you know, what we've been discussing in the last couple of meetings. Um, bringing in what we heard from Jim and how Northampton does it um, and and all of that, talking about what some of the things that Dave just previewed. So I'm gonna start with Dave. Could, could I say something real quick? Oh, sure. I just, I, I would thank you for inviting me today and, um, and uh, being part of this discussion. Um, I, I think it's great that our two great cities can uh, reach out and work together and that um, I also want to say that I, you know, that throughout this, I, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I have eight other colleagues. I have um, many former colleagues that um, I uh, humbly know more than me, <laughs> and that um, I have been part of many of these discussions. But there, you know, there there are other people who um, over in in Northampton, fellow counselors who are very well versed in all of this and so thank you so thanks so um you know what i i, I think i'll hang around but i'm going to take a quick break and okay. so if you want to you know pull me into and ask another question while you guys are talking feel free to um mm -hmm. i'm going to finish my snack and but go ahead thank you thank you dave Yes, still here. You said you had some stuff you wanted to bring up, so now's yeah, the well, time. I, sure. Well, I, I think as part of this discussion, and, and again, I, I would defer to Chris on, or um, Steve on the history of, of how the planning board has worked through zoning. And, you know, we've, we've had a lot of meetings since you all were elected about this topic. Um, but I think, and again, I don't really, I don't have a horse in the race as to how we do it. My only concerns are about really efficiency, transparency, all of some of the things that you talked about here, outreach, making sure we're inclusive in our process. Um, and so, you know, as I've been thinking about this lately, some, some things have, you know, and I've had various conversations with Mandy, with Lynn, with Paul, with Chris, uh, with, and, and taking things in from some of the meetings we've had um, going back many, many months. Um, a couple of things have kind of, um, I guess, themes have come out. One is, um, although six months ago, I might have thought we should create another committee on zoning and, and include residents and, and um, uh, stakeholders in, in, in town. Um, lately, and, and I think specifically, more specifically since the COVID-19 situation, I've kind of moved away from that and said, I'm not sure that's really going to give us the efficiency and the, and the movement and the forward motion that we need. Um, and hearing Jim talk about Northampton's process and talking a, a little bit with four or five people, including Rob Mora and Christine and Christine Gray Mullen and Mandy, um, I'm more inclined to, to see if, if the CRC can play a larger role working with the planning board 
on, on moving um, uh, zoning forward. So that's kind of my one theme. My second theme is, is just a little bit of concern about the workload for the planning board. Um, you know, despite COVID-19, there's still a lot of things coming before the planning board. Um, they're, they're very busy. Um, they're, with Christine's help, they're working on the master plan. The zoning subcommittee is, is a very small group. Um, and I just have concerns whether they have the bandwidth. And I think some of them have expressed this. This isn't a unique thought of mine. I've, I've heard them say this in meetings. You know, do we have the bandwidth to be the, the glue here to move zoning forward? So I think those are kind of the two themes for me. One is I've moved away from the whole idea of well, maybe we should create a separate committee or group task force to work on zoning. Um, maybe the CRC is the better place for that to be. And then two is, you know, is there a role now that we have you all as the town council, is there a role for the, the zoning subcommittee or should it just be the planning board should be, every planning board member should be as involved as the next in zoning working with the CRC to move that, to move zoning forward to the, the full council. So those are my two discussion starters. Thank you, Dave. Um, does anyone have any responses to that? Any thoughts? Um, I know we've had, we've gone through a couple of thoughts as we've transitioned this committee and membership about zoning process. So I see Shalini's hand up. So Shalini. Um, I, what I uh, from Northampton process was that it started with the planning department and then the planning board provided some feedback on the technical side and then it was it went to the town council and which was about then engaging the community at large and so forth so I'm still not clear about the planning board's role and how they can and the other thing is since we're talking about the planning board I think one of the things we were discussing is before we finalize, you know, finalize our process, we want to hear different perspectives and what's already been done. And so it would be great to hear from the planning board, what are their thoughts and what have they thought about what are, what is their capacity, what are their challenges? And then also to hear from of course, the planning department, Chris is there and like, what is her experience being and what does she, uh, or what does the planning department feel would be the moving forward and based on what we've learned from the past. So those Thank are you. my comments. Steve. Um, yeah, I think my comment is it's, it's interesting that it's been two years since there's been a zoning change in, um, in Amherst. So and a lot of that is that the, are trying to get our feet on the ground and we've reorganized our own committees, but I still am a proponent of let's try something because I know that there are, you know, some important issues in the holding pen that, you know, honestly are, some of them are relatively benign, but still important. But I, I think, I get worried that we overthink this. So, but, and we've done a lot of things. We went to from town meeting to select board to town council, that's a big part of it. We went to a much to a smaller planning board. The planning board membership changed, so these are all factors. But I'm, you know, I let's do something is my mantra. Thanks, Steve. Um, Sarah or Evan, any thoughts, Evan? Yeah, sure. Um, so. First, I, I want to say I know this idea of a new committee um, for zoning has been sort of tossed around um, a bit. I, I've always been a little skeptical of that, so I'm, I'm ha I was happy to hear Dave's comment. And, and part of the reason for that is, uh, one, this town loves nothing more than to create committees. Uh, just yesterday, we were talking about creating the new Wage Theft Advisory Committee. Um, and GOL never did go through with its action of trying to uh, Marie Kondo our committees to, to try to reduce it. Um, so, so if we can avoid another yet another committee, to me, that's a, 
a good thing. And, and the reason for that is I really look at, um, if we say we're going to have a zoning committee that's going to come forth and bring forward zoning recommendations, um, what that, that says to the counselors, what that says to the planning board is, don't worry about zoning. We have a committee that's going to bring forward some stuff. And we're not going to really take any action until a committee brings stuff forward. When, as Steve said, there's stuff that we can do pretty soon that should be seen as low-hanging fruit. The other aspect of it is um, every time someone says that, uh, or talks about the committee, I hear this idea of, yeah, and, and so, you know, six months or something like that. And, and I think back to uh, Downtown Parking Working Group. How long was that committee supposed to be in existence for? Well, I don't remember what the original timeline was, um, but it ended up being years and years and years. Um, and I can only imagine that a zoning committee would be the same thing. Um, and, and even now, still, we, we haven't even actually implemented any of the uh, recommendations from the Downtown Parking Working Group, even though we got their report in the fall. And so um, I'm really skeptical of the idea. Uh, I, I think the committee idea goes against any aspect of efficiency or effectiveness. Um, and so I, I'm with Steve on this, that we have people who, who uh, know what the low hanging fruit changes are. Let's at least get our feet wet. And so I, I'm really skeptical. I, I think that there's definitely a need for a larger zoning overhaul. Um, I think if we go from nothing for two years to a large zoning overhaul, that's going to be a big, a big ask of a, especially of a council that has yet to actually have to deal with a zoning change. So to me, it seems like this is a good time for us to start moving forward on some low hanging fruit zoning changes, one of which is actually on our agenda today, um, although it doesn't really affect zoning necessarily. Um, and so I guess that's just my initial thoughts is, is uh, steering away from any type of committee um, and, and making clear that we're ready to move forward with stuff. And whether we adopt this sort of three time a year process, uh, I'm, you know, I've made my opinions on that clear, but I'm fine trying it out. But I'm fine trying it out with the understanding that we'll actually try it out like soon. Sarah, do you have any comments right now? Yeah, I guess I would say that I agree with Steve and with Evan. I, I think that what this council is maybe finding out is that while committees are fantastic and they often get a lot of work done and we, we need them, I think that we're also working, I think we're working well together to make changes and sometimes it does make things less effective and I think that we're sort of seeing even in the committees that we have a lot of these meetings are being called as a committee of the whole because really council as a whole you know would like to to say something to know something and then I think that we're, we're moving towards action so I I don't think I would like to see a separate committee I think that um you know, if, if CRC that starts to deal with it, I think that's great. And I think as far as um, implementing things, I really like the idea from Northampton um, saying that, you know, letting people know what zoning changes are happening and, you know, what, what projects it could be. And I see it not as like stirring up opposition in the very opposite way, I see it as very early on, like if as individual counselors and as CRC, if we can explain to people early on, you know, what's going on and field their questions, and we can also sort of be ambassadors of something, it just seems like it would, that is something that would be more effective where we could quickly let people know about things. And um, when people know more, you know, we could, we could move things further, quicker. Shalini? Yeah, I, I definitely like that idea a lot, Sarah, about um, our role as district counselors and counselors to reach out and keep uh, the constituents informed. So that's definitely, that was like, ding, yeah, how come we never thought of that? That was a great insight from Northampton, thank you. Um, I'm also thinking like, uh, it seems like we're putting everything in the same bucket and what Steve and Evan are alluding to is that there are these smaller things that would uh, that is a low hanging fruit and we should address those as, as a separate thing and then there are the larger zoning changes and for that 
maybe for that, something like that, to implement what's in the master plan, what are the zoning changes that are needed based on our master plan? For that, do we need a separate committee like Northampton had the zoning revisions committee? Do we need something like that for the bigger changes? But I think we probably need to see those two things as two separate things. One we can act on right away and one we need to get the bigger picture of what is our vision and how can we bring the change based on our vision in the master plan. So before I recognize Dave, I'm gonna put my two cents in and try and summarize things. Um, what I'm hearing from everyone is, a, what I think I'm hearing is sort of a general idea of this prior CRC committee, though before the change in membership had adopted a flow chart. Um, of how zoning changes might happen and and in trying at one point it was going to be on a council agenda and I actually pulled it because I wasn't sure it was complete. That's where we started this new conversation with potentially times of years and and you know buckets or or whatever. Um, and then we got into all of this. But what I'm actually feel like I'm hearing from everyone is that flow chart might be enough for now. And maybe that flow chart is what we can send to the council for this is how zoning change process might work for now in terms of the logistical technical changes. Um, it had a box at the bottom that talked about discussions and all of the sort of nitty gritty of wording might happen before it formally comes to council and all of that. And um, so, so I'm hearing that this new membership makeup might be ready to say, yes, let's just ship that off to the council with the prior vote. We could even probably revote that as this committee, um, as, as a new membership, um, to get that process sort of adopted by the council. That process has been through a planning board discussion multiple times. Um, and my understanding is they've generally agreed with that flowchart along with that. We don't know what happens before that formal 60 day window takes place. Um, the, the clock timing starts. But what I'm also hearing, and something that I think I agree with, is there's a need for someone saying, here's the priorities on what we would like staff to work on zoning change-wise. And that's what I think I'm gathering from the comments that the rest of the committee made just now, is we want to work on something we might need a larger zoning change thing, but there's stuff we want to get done and maybe we as a committee can be that that group that says, here's what we want to see coming to the council. Um, what we, we can be the group that connects the master plan to the zoning changes, what are the most important, maybe creating that prioritized list to help the planning board and the planning staff decide and prioritize what they're going to focus on language wise now and in the near future and sort of create that. Um, I, if I'm hearing all of that wrong, <laughs> please let me know. But that's sort of what I think I'm gathering now. And then maybe for a later conversation, while potentially it sounds like we might want staff to be working on these larger changes of zoning. Um, I think I heard that from a few counselors just now. We're not sure how that process might look, but maybe the internal staff working on it can start. Um, and whether those technical discussions happen in CRC or planning board or something, maybe we're not ready for that decision yet, but maybe we can go on. So now I got a lot of hands. So I'm going to go through the hands, um, starting with Dave. So thanks. I, I do, yeah, let me Hold, I do want to talk about where things are going to originate, but I wanted to make four quick points. One is, um, you know, COVID-19 is and will be a game changer for our downtown. You, you just heard the presentation from Gabrielle and um, Claudia last night. So there's no greater urgency, I think, than has been created by COVID-19 for us to, you know, try to make changes that make our downtown and our village centers um, more competitive, um, easier, and uh, for for businesses to to repopulate those spaces, to build a new on land, or to uh, 
to, uh, to bring our downtown and our village centers back to whatever the new, the new normal will be. So that's number one. COVID is a motivator, a huge motivator. Um, I think right now we have a great staff. I mean, we have Chris, we have Rob Mora, we have Nate Malloy, we have a number of people in key positions. Um, and then we have great boards and committees. The planning board is raring to go. Um, we have you all, you all, uh, your first term ends in the fall of 21, correct? So I often refer to this kind of as the dream team. And with all this knowledge, all this well-intentioned um, uh, energy we all have, I think it's a great time to get some things moving. Um, and I don't think that's always true. But again, we have somebody in Chris and Rob who have done some of this work before in other communities. Uh, Chris has been with the department for over 15 years. It's a great time to, to move on some of these things. Um, where I wonder, and Mandy, to your last point, I, and, and, I, and we're open to whatever the, the, the CRC would like to do, but I wonder if Rob, Rob and Chris have been working on things behind the scenes. They, they have some things that they would like to talk to you about. I wonder if, if we give some general guidance to Christine and Rob and then have them present, as uh, Jim mentioned in Northampton, some packages. Here's, here's a group one. This is low hanging fruit. Let's get those in the process. Here's group two, you know, and, and some of that is already outlined in some of the zoning priorities that we've seen in past lists developed by the zoning subcommittee and the planning board. So either, I wonder if it's easier to react to something they give you than it is to say, oh, I think we should work on the signed bylaw. Well, is the signed bylaw really important to get downtown and the village centers going after COVID-19? I don't know, I think I would, I would defer to Christine and Rob to inform us on that. So anyway, and then lastly, you know, out of respect for the planning board and the zoning subcommittee, it is really critical, I think, that we hear from them that they are on board with this relationship uh, between the CRC and, and the planning board. And again, I, I kind of put it out there, we don't, we don't have Christine Gray Mullen with us, but is there gonna be a role for the zoning subcommittee? I, I think we, we, we do need to address that. Um, and not leave it hanging because then we want to be clear what are the roles moving forward. So I'll stop there, but those were kind of my four quick points. Thank you, um, Evan, and then Shalini, and then Christine Brestrup. Yeah, so I forget why I originally raised my hand, um, but listening to Dave talk, I think that he hinted on something that I, I've been struggling with because um, I've been wanting us to do something on zoning for for a while now. Those are, there are many of you here who have heard me complain about this. Um, and I, I know personally what I would like to see done. I have shared that in some cases publicly, in some cases privately with, with other individuals. Um, I have written zoning bylaw amendments that are just sitting on my desktop. And the reason I haven't moved forward is I still haven't figured out what the relationships and roles are. And I don't think that, that we have. And so uh, I've been told Christine and Rob have been working on something. I know the zoning subcommittee has been working on things. And so I don't want to try to step on their toes and short circuit the process by saying, and here's my amendment, and then find out that zoning by zoning subcommittee has been working on something similar for months, right? So there, there's a there's I think I don't necessarily know what our role is as counselors in this, and we heard from Jim sort of how he perceives the roles of counselors in Northampton, which I think was really informative to hear. I don't necessarily know that that needs to be how we have to perceive our roles, um, and we can do things differently. Um, but I think that that's going to be an important conversation to have because um, I think that where things originate can be varied, but it's it's useful for us to know um, what things are happening, and so we can work together so we're not stepping on toes. Um, but I also think you know, Dave said, you know, is it more make more sense for us to be reactive um, to what planning staff comes forward with? or to try to be more proactive. And I, I don't know the answer to that because I think to some extent, um, 
Chris and, and Nate and, and everyone on, in planning has so much more expertise and knowledge than I do on this. And so I wanted to defer to that expertise. At the same time, to some extent, they're gonna bring forward stuff that they think is in the best interest of the town, but we're also here to be representing sort of what we think are, um, you know, our priorities, which as because we got elected also reflect the priorities of our constituents. And so to some extent, we want to be deferring to their expertise and what they say needs to be done. But I also think we should be signaling to them what we want to see happening because um, I don't want Chris or, or Nate or anyone on the zoning subcommittee working on a zoning bylaw change for months that's going to be dead on arrival in the council because it says that we should, you know, uh, not allow any more people to live in downtown. We're going to be like, well, that's, that's, that's not at all what we want as a council, right? And so I think it's tricky to figure out this relationship, which is why these conversations are important, um, where things originally and also what we do. But I think to, to, to sum this up, I see our role to some extent as the CRC as representing um, what types of things we would like to see done. And we might not necessarily come forward and say, we need this zoning thing changed, but we do know that we wanna see, you know, greater density in the, in the you know, residential village center or something like that. Um, and then they can say, oh, well, here's how to achieve that. I don't know if that made sense. Yes, that did. Shalini. Yes, yeah, so many things, but I think the first thing that comes to mind is uh, to echo Evan, we are, as counselors, hearing from different constituents. We're hearing from town staff. And so we do have a particular vision looking at, you know, things from the bigger perspective of all stakeholders. And so I think we do play a role in at least recommending or acting on things related to zoning changes. The second thing um, I think is, I was curious about, I, I probably need to look at the chart again, but the idea of it, like from beginning to end, how long is that process there in our current chart? Because I was thinking if we can make that tighter and, and have it move faster, especially for the things that are low hanging fruit. So I don't know what, the time period is from beginning to end. I heard in Northampton, I heard the for, fig, the 60 days was uh, what it takes, or maybe I heard that wrong, I don't know. But is there a way of, um, yeah, okay, so it's 60 days. But when I look at the chart, it seems like, and I add up all the days, it's definitely more than 60 days. So how can we make that process, especially for the low hanging fruit? And the third thing, what I'm hearing, um, and have been hearing, and especially Dave highlighted that, especially given with the, the COVID and what's happening, we really need to identify things that really need to happen quickly and how can council facilitate that and also engage the constituents so everyone's on board. Oh, last thing also very important is the planning board and our relationship with them and is, is could we have a meeting with them? I see that Chris Mullen are attending this meeting right now, but probably as an individual capacity, but do we need to engage with the planning board in a more formal and have kind of a discussion with them about this? Thank you. I will make a note of that to answer your question on timing. There's some state law requirements. You can always go quicker. You're not supposed to go slower. Um, and it is from the time of formal referral from the council to the planning board at a formal proposal, 65 days to the public hearing um, for the planning board public hearing. Um, I'm not sure there's a determination or a set time between planning board public hearing and town council public hearing. We're, we've aimed to hold those together. There is a timeline from town council public hearing of no more than 90 days between that public hearing and a vote on the amendment. So if you hold joint hearings, you've got a time of approximately 150 days, no more than approximately 150 days from the time it is introduced 
and re introduced at council essentially um, and voted on at council. So that's 150 days. Obviously it can go quicker. Um, it by state law is not supposed to go slower. Um, and Christine has her hand up and then I wanna actually move on. We will bring this back at a next meeting for a very brief discussion and hopefully a resolution. So Christine. Hey, Christine, me? Christine. Yes, me. you, Christine. Sorry, Christine Brestrom. I wanted to uh, just um, re reiterate that Christine Gray Mullen is here. She did join as an attendee. I think Janet McGowan is also here as an attendee. Um, but I wanted to say that the zoning subcommittee is really a child of the planning board. It's a subcommittee of the planning board. So the planning board may find it helpful um, to keep the zoning subcommittee engaged. Um, and I think that's really probably a decision that um, the planning board would be the, the proper body to make. Um, they may find that, you know, it's easier for them to work on zoning if a smaller group gets together and does that work and then brings it to the planning board. And then the planning board as a whole meets with this CRC or, you know, whatever. So the anyway, I just wanted to say that it really is in in the body of the planning board that the C, that the zoning subcommittee lives. Um, the zoning subcommittee and the planning board have developed a list of priorities on a chart that I've shared with you a couple of times. It's kind of a rainbow colored chart, and it's had things moved around over the years. But I think that's pretty expressive. Um, aside from the fact that we're now in this COVID nineteen. Uh, emergency, um, but the chart is pretty expressive of what the planning board has thought of as priorities that the town really needs to work on. Um, but they're also very interested in hearing what town council and CR think, C think of as priorities. And there hasn't been as much, there's been a lot of back and forth about the process, but there hasn't been much back and forth yet about substance. So I think the planning board would welcome hearing from CRC or the town council about what town council thinks are priorities. And in terms of um, things that uh, Evan has come up with, um, gosh, I would love to see if Evan has some good ideas that might be presented to the zoning subcommittee and the planning board and might um, you know, even be a better idea than anything they've come up with so far. So I, I wouldn't hold off on sharing your ideas. Um, I think that's, that's really exciting that you have these ideas. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of what I think. I think we just need to talk more and we need to start doing something. I would love to start with, we had a list of three things last June that we wanted to start with and we just never, for various reasons, got it going. One of them, I think, is on your agenda to talk about today, which is voting requirements for site plan review by the planning board. That might be a small item that you could pick off and do um, you know, just kind of to get the zoning process rolling, get a feel for how it works, and then everybody's going to feel more comfortable um, moving on to other things. But I'm really excited about having, having this conversation and getting an understanding of what um, CRC and Town Council thinks are important issues. Thank you. So we are actually going to move on to that item. I recognize we have technically 15 minutes left in our agenda. <laughs> I think two to four. Yep. Um, and so I'm going to get going and, and want to say thanks for having me. And um, you guys sound like you're having really great discussions. Well, thank, thank you, Jim. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you Bye, guys. All right. Take good Bye. care. So our next item is a zoning bylaw section 11.25 proposed amendment. And I just need to introduce this a little bit before we have a discussion on it. Um, I, I need to be clear about a couple of things. Um, the first one is this has not been in front of the planning board yet. It was supposed to be in front of the planning board in mid-March. Um, but those meetings, as we all know, got canceled because of a pandemic. And it has not made it back to the planning board. Um, but I, I felt we could bring this forward despite it having not been in front of the planning board and despite the fact that the language that is on the very first page of this packet item is not necessarily the final language because it has not been discussed anywhere. Um, it is one of, uh, if you read through the packet, a couple of different proposals. Um, but I thought it could come to us for a 
basic discussion about maybe where we as a CRC are on what that voting requirement we might want to see, particularly because this is something that in some sense relates directly to the change in government because the planning board switched from nine members to seven members at the change of government. This number had five, it was based on nine members. And when we redid all of our zoning with the revise and replace, this is a section that for whatever reason got overlooked in potentially needing to be changed um, or never did get changed. And so um, I thought this is something that kind of relates to that um, and now in some sense falls within our charge. So one of the things I'd like to concentrate on is not necessarily the specific language of the amendment because that's not something I want us drafting. I think that's something that the planning department can draft with consultation with our attorneys. Um, but what I'd like us more to look at is the very last page of the packet, which is titled for discussion only the decision voting requirements for site plan review and figure out maybe which one of them we as a committee would potentially recommend the the planning department and planning board consider more highly or something um but also but i i see evan's hand up so we'll we'll take evan but i'd also like christine if there's any questions if christine can talk mainly about sort of what a site plan review is and it's different between difference between that and a special permit and things like that. So we'll start with Evan. So I obviously have opinions on this that I can save. I, I raised my hand actually just to um, interject about um, having served on bylaw review committee um, because you mentioned this was something that was either overlooked or, or, or not. Uh, so this was actually something that was discussed by the bylaw review committee. Um, so when bylaw review committee was looking at how to bring different bylaws into conformity with our charter we tried very carefully to thread the needle between things that were strictly bringing into conformity versus things that could be seen as more substantive this was discussed and and from my recollection this was probably about a year ago they were sort of broad agreement on the bylaw review committee that this number should be changed in response but it felt a little it didn't feel exactly like bringing into conformity it felt like it was too substantive to be covered by that and so this was something that was discussed when we were looking at this um but so there was sort of agreement that even though we felt like it was a good idea to change the number it might not necessarily have been our place thank you for that background evan so christine could you just give us a little background you're the one that prepared this packet for the planning board and all and then we will move to steve okay so i did prepare the packet but i did not prepare this chart christine gray mullen prepared the chart and she actually has done a fair amount of research about what other cities and towns in massachusetts do about this but to give you a rundown on the difference between a special permit and a site plan review a special permit is something that's codified in Chapter 40A of Mass General Laws. It's a, um, it's a chance for um, either the Zoning Board of Appeals or the Planning Board to allow a use or something else that isn't um, clearly um, compatible with what surrounds it. Um, in other words, it really is something that may require more scrutiny and may require some conditions to make it fit in better. Um, so it really has to do with the use, but it also encompasses other things as well. Whereas with a site plan review, the use is considered to be allowed. So um, wherever you have site plan review in our zoning chart, it means that in that particular zoning district, a long time ago, the people of Amherst decided that that use was typical in this particular zoning district and therefore should be allowed. However, with regard to the number of trees that it should have or where a sidewalk should be or where the building should go or the orientation of the building, number of lights, um, access, perhaps having it near uh, or have, have a bus stop nearby or any, any number of things that relate to the site, it was felt that um, you know, a site plan review would be uh, what is really needed because the use is allowed, but we want to help it fit into the neighborhood better by adjusting the site, um, the site uh, aspects. So um, 
a long time ago, oh, back in the 80s, 70s, I don't even know how far back it went, there was something called plan approval. And that was a creature of, it wasn't state law, it was something that was allowed by Amherst zoning bylaw that allowed the planning director and the building commissioner to get together and review a plan and determine whether it fit in with the zoning bylaw. It wasn't something that required a special permit. It just required somebody to make sure that it um, comported with the zoning requirements. And then um, a couple of years later or decades later, I'm not really sure how much, um, people decided that, well, that's not really fair to the public to have the planning director and the building commissioner make this decision. It might be um, something that's being proposed that is going to affect the public. So Amherst decided, well, let's have a site plan review process where we could have a public hearing, we could invite the public in, and then have more careful scrutiny of whatever is being proposed, not vis-a-vis -vis the use, but vis-a-vis -vis how the site is, um, is arranged. So we instituted that sometime in the 80s, I think it was 1988, but we instituted it in a way, in a way that it mirrored the special permit process. So we borrowed from state law with regard to notifications, notification of abutters, legal ads, et cetera, and we mirrored our site plan review on special permit. Um, that's when we had nine uh, members of the planning board and the um, idea was to have two thirds of the planning board vote in favor of whatever was being proposed by site plan review, just the same as it was for a special permit. And then we realized that other cities and towns were only requiring a majority to vote for, um, for site plan review ap approval. So Amherst said, well, let's uh, move in that direction. Let's require a majority of a nine member board, which would be five, but um, actually keep the two thirds. So if you had all members of the planning board present, you would require a two thirds vote, which would be six. But if you only had eight of the members present, you could require a five, um, a five member majority. So that was, that was instituted in 1998. Um, now, again, that was with a nine member planning board. Now we have a seven member planning board. So um, should we still keep to um, requiring that five members vote in favor? Shouldn't we go to a, um, well, a two thirds of seven, I believe, I'm not sure how much that is, but it's four point something. But anyway, shouldn't we go to a majority like um, other cities and towns in Massachusetts. They've gone from using two thirds for site plan review to using a majority. And most cities and towns do that. So a majority of seven would be four instead of five. So that's what we're looking at right now. And as I said, Christine Gray Mullen has examined all the different parameters and perm permutations of this. And that's what is displayed in the chart and Perhaps if you'd like her to go into detail about explaining that, she could do that. So I will not have her do that because she is not expecting any of that today. Um, so we're, we're going to sort of stay away from that for now. But I do want to, Steve still has his hand up. So Steve. Yeah, so um, when I was on the planning board, we also discussed this issue because the charter had passed. So we knew that we we're going to be reducing our numbers to seven. And we had gotten to the point of making a proposal, and then we, uh, you know, never followed through on that. But Evan, I think, explained well what my understanding of what the bylaw revisions committee was doing is to not enter anything that seemed to be controversial. So the fact that there are two numbers here, an absolute number and a percentage number, makes it means that whoever the writers were had some sort of an intent that we need to you know, figure out what that is. So just to add on to what Chris was saying is that site plan review is basically by right. So it's sort of by right, but versus special permit, which is discretionary. So those are huge differences. So by right with input is a very different animal than something discretionary. So discretionary, the answer can be no. In a site plan review, really the answer can't be no, but it can be well, it can't be no, um, I'm not explaining it very, that very well, but there has to be an extraordinary reasons to, to um, vote no on a, you know, a site plan review that, 
I, I, I don't have all my thoughts together on that. So my, my sense, you know, I, I feel strongly about the, the percentage and not strongly about the absolute. So the way that it's written now, it's actually can be harder to get a site plan review passed than it can to get a special permit passed. So the other thing is that site special permit is defined by mass general law. Site plan review is a construct of each town. So even the towns that are use the term site plan review, use it in different ways. Every single zoning bylaw is different. And every single use of the, the concept of site plan review is also slightly different. Um, we are almost out of time for our meeting. I'm going to take Christine and then I'm going to summarize where we are with this. Oh, Steve. And I have to go. I'm sorry. I have to go to another. I have to go over to another. Uh, uh, all right, so we'll hear from Christine, we'll summarize, and then we will move on okay. um, and finish this meeting as soon as we can, as close to four o'clock as we can. So Christine. I think I'm going to lower my hand. Okay. Um, so, so what I would like out of the committee today is, you know, I, I didn't expect any voting, despite it being on action items or anything, um, is we were just talking about how do we get things moving. So is it possible for us to sort of signal somehow to planning board that this is something despite COVID and pandemic that we would like them to be discussing? Um, what are people's thoughts on that? Is that something we should be pushing forward? Do we want to discuss this again at another meeting where we get into what our thoughts are on the percentages um, versus the wording, which I'm not as concerned about? Um, thoughts, quickly. Evan. Yeah, so quickly, um, to me, this dovetails really nicely with the presentation we got from the bid in the chamber last night um, about ways we can make our town more appealing to businesses. Um, I think saying to them, uh, these are things that you can build here by right, but we're going to have hold the voting threshold to the same as if it was by special permit seems ludicrous and sends uh, not a great message. And so I, I definitely think this is something they should take on because I think this is a, a, a low hanging fruit first step towards what we seem to agree on last night when we heard from the bid in the chamber. Um, and I think that a simple majority, I don't, I, I don't even think we need the absolute number. I think a simple majority is, is, is the way to go. Sarah and Shalini, any thoughts? Sarah? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I see the, I, I, so I'm coming from a district that's suspicious of everything, right? So I, I'm suspicious if you change the numbers, but I also see the, if this is by right, then like Evan said, we're just making things harder for business. So I'm sort of undecided, but I'm leaning towards having it be majority instead of a specific number. And would you, let, let me just ask directly, should, should if I went to, or if Christine Brestrup, who's here, came back to the planning board, they have a meeting tomorrow night, I don't know what she's going to talk, you know, if she's going to report on our meeting today, but if she were, uh, are we sort of at a consensus that this is something we'd like to see the planning board take up sooner rather than later? I would say absolutely, yes. Yeah. And I see Shalini nodding. I heard from Evan, yes. I, I, so, so I think we can report either through myself or through Christine Brestrup that this is something we'd love to see start showing back up on the planning board agendas for discussion and all. Um, and, and as I said, we haven't really had the discussion as to numbers. We can do that. Maybe I can talk to the planning board chair as to whether they'd want us to have that discussion before they do or simultaneously or not, um, or wait till they've had their discussion and have language before it comes to us, but I'll figure that out later. So thank you for all of that information. I, we will make sure we convey that. Um, I'm going to skip the CRC meeting times. That is, as long as we agree that next, our next meeting is going to be, where are we? Um, May 19th, um, we can vote on the actual document later. Um, we're going to skip the minutes for tonight, today, because we are out of time. We'll, we'll get to them next time. Uh, does anyone have any announcements? I am not seeing any hands. Next meeting agenda preview um, is going to be a crazy agenda. We're going to put time limits on stuff so that we can get through everything. Um, we have already been in contact with 
the presenters of the the sponsors of the Wild Animal Act bylaw. We're going to have an initial presentation just to get that in and sort of a discussion for um, just about what it is and all of that. I have received some already requested amendments to it. I have not looked at them yet from another group. Um, I will put them in the packet for next week, but I do not intend to have a full discussion on that bylaw because we are quite busy on other things and it is not, frankly, something that I see as chair needing to go quickly. Um, and so while we're going to start that, we're going to try and move it forward, maybe a little bit of a discussion at a time at multiple meetings um, to see, but I will at least put the in the public comments I've received into the packet next week so people know what they are. Um, I figure we'll have a discussion from the bid in or on the bid in chamber zoning stuff that they presented on Monday night. Um, I think it goes well with the discussion we've been having here. We will bring back the zoning process to try and find something with that. Um, I'll talk with Dave and Shalini as vice chair probably the planning board chair to see whether we should have a joint meeting of the planning board and CRC at some point to get through that. But I'm hoping to be able to, by next meeting, sort of finish up that so it's not taking so much time and we can actually get towards moving stuff along. Um, does anyone else have any other suggestions on agenda for next time? Dave. Real quick, I know we're out of time. I would just I think we're all anxious to get going on the zoning discussion. So anything we can do to work with Christine Gray Mullen and, and you um, to move that along. I think staff are anxious to begin working with you, with the planning board. So I, you know, I can't think of it, too many things that are more urgent in town right now. Um, anything we can do to help the business community, to help uh, help our, our, our the business community and, and the village centers come out of um, the COVID-19 really devastation that you heard last night. Uh, it's it's got to be a very high priority for all of us. So let's get moving on it. We're ready. Anything else from any of the members? Are, are there any items not anticipated by the chair? They're not by me, by anyone else. Not seeing any. And so at 4.04 .04 p.m., I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you all so much for being patient with us. We will have meetings next week to make sure we get through everything. Thank you.